Hi, my name is Jim, and uh, this is Jim Warfare, the Battle of Ideas. And yes, an idea. Everything you know about the Earth is wrong. Um, so Mark Sargent is uh, going to be joining me now from the US, uh, and he's going to be explaining to me why the Earth, <laughs> why the Earth is flat and why everything I know about it is wrong. Mark, thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thanks very much for having me. <laughs> All right, so let's let's first quickly get something out the way. You are uh, in Virginia. We just spoke about it. You're on the West Coast, not the East Coast. I am on the West Coast, but not Virginia. Virginia is on the East Coast near Washington, D.C. I am on the West Coast near Los Angeles. In a, oh, in so not a, Virginia. You're in Langley. Yeah, Langley, which is really close to a city called Seattle. So north, yes. so so if you go north of the California coast, it is Los Angeles and San Francisco, and then Port, you know, Oregon, and then finally Seattle. Isn't Seattle where Nirvana came from? Yes, the entire grunge movement in the '90s started here, and uh, I only caught the beginning part of that before I went out to Colorado, where I spent 20 years doing uh, video game and software testing. Ah, oh, fantastic. All right, so <laughs> this, this is the most bizarre <laughs> um, conversation. All right, let's, uh, let's, start at, let's start at the start. Yeah. You, uh, you, rep you represent the flat earth movement, right. and your, your claim is that the earth is flat. Yeah. Yeah, not only is it flat, but it's enclosed. So you're not on a little rock that's covered with a wisp of smoke flying through space in multiple directions and multiple velocities. You are actually in a building uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, a uh, structure, no different than a planetarium, a terrarium, a sports stadium, a snow globe, whatever you want to call it, and that our best and brightest didn't figure it out until, by that I mean like the United States and the Soviet Union, figured it out in about 1960 and not for sure. They didn't know for sure until about 1960. And then when they, they figured it out, they decided to keep it hidden from the public and they spent a lot of money and time and created the space programs. And it's slowly but surely been falling apart because of the internet and smartphones. And that's where we are now. And I've, and so in 2015, cause I know it's your follow-up question, how did I got into it? In 2015, well, in 2014, I looked into it, thought it was ridiculous. Everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody's heard about Flat Earth. It is stupid. It's ridiculous. And the reason is, but why do you think it's stupid? In fact, let me, let me open with a, a George Orwell quote. George Orwell, you know, creator of 1984. He wrote this wonderful quote in the Tribune in 1946. He said, he goes, it's really strange. He's talking about the responsibility of science. He says, it's really strange. You go to anyone on the sidewalk, you ask them how they know the world is a globe. And people say, talking about, we know, it is known, right? It is, is a given, like algebra. And then you push them. He's like, how do you know? People start getting upset. And he goes, he goes it really talk, he, again, he was talking about the responsibility of science. Well, it, because people believe basically anything that, the science, that science tells them. And the and reason I mention that is, okay, so he wrote that article in 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in the world know in 1946 that the world was a globe? There were no space programs. But, how did everybody yeah, know? But they, no, but didn't they know that already from, from the, time, the time of the Greeks? Uh, ooh, okay. W what exactly about it? Again, there's some generalities there. There's only two arguments that are outside because you have to throw out the entire sp space programs. Because okay. it's not like NASA created the globe in 1972. We knew for at least five at least five centuries before that. But how did you know? There's only two arguments. One is ships going over the horizon, yeah. and the other is sticks and shadows, which you know goes all the way back. Sticks to and yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about sticks and shadows. Yeah, the sticks yes. and shadows. Well, most people don't even know, can't even explain the sticks and shadows argument. Plus, the sticks and shadows. Uh, is also relative, meaning uh, it works the exact same. You can test this with a flashlight in a dark room. Uh, if the sun, yeah, the sun is 93 million miles away and hundreds of thousands of miles. I'm going to use miles, not kilometers. Wait, do you guys use miles or kilometers? Down we, there? Use, we use kilometers. Oh, okay, we, so. we're, we're, uh, we're part of the Commonwealth. <laughs> Whatever. Be more, be more like America. <laughs> no, it's true. What, what, Wait, with your, with your, uh, what we use a metric system. What do you use? <laughs> we use the old system. They tried to introduce. <laughs> sorry, on a side note, they tried to introduce the metric system here when I was in about sixth grade, and it just went, Gah! just fell, f just fell flat. I mean, you must be the only country in the world that still uses the imperial system. Pretty like much, maybe yeah. Japan. I think, you know what? As well. I have a theory behind that. I think it's mostly because 
it's not very interesting. It's really bland. Everything's in tens and it's like, you know, centimeter and decimeter and <laughs> kilometer and all this. It's like it, everything else kind of has a has a cool rustic feel to it. You know, the ounce, the foot, the yard, you know, the, the mot, inch. the what? The, the inch. The inch. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we it's got, really and we got so many cool things that are tied to it. I just don't think it caught on culturally. I was like, oh, you know, kind of like it's, it's like it feels like the Borg is coming in with the metric uh, system. Before you continue, I just want to quickly say, for the for the sake of those watching and listening on the podcast, right. uh, I'm, I'm not a journalist. I'm not here to try and argue with you. I'm not here to uh, try and convince you that you're wrong. Oh, no, no, I'm that's, sure fine. Had, that's fine. I'm sure, the, you, I'm sure you've had plenty of that over the years. The, um, I just want to learn. No, that's cool. That's and cool. I want to get evidence from you. That's, God, no, so that's, 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 that's perfectly fine. Um, the And by the way, the chat room will be asking those sort of questions all day long. It's like, what about this? In fact, every pretty much every day I get up and I have to answer one of two questions, which is, all right, fine, you believe the earth is flat. What about blank and how does blank work? Uh, we dealt with that with the, the film festivals. Anyway, sorry. So uh, back to, real quick, the sticks and shadows argument versus versus um, uh, like ships going over the horizon and we can get into other stuff uh, in a second because I know we're limited on time, which is because I'll be talking a lot. Um, yeah, you, you are welcome to chat. I think I think this is such an interesting topic that I honestly don't mind you talking. Perfect. Okay, so the sun, the six and shadows argument works just as well if the sun is very, very close and very, very small. And that's what we're saying. It, not only is this a building, but the sun and the moon are tiny by comparison. The moon is not 2,000 miles wide and the sun is not... Um, hundreds of thousands of miles wide. They are both less than, it could be even like 50 miles wide. They're extremely small. In fact, so small that when we draw maps, we can't even accurately, what we want to put them on there because they'd be so tiny that you couldn't even put them on our maps. So just why when you see like, you know, our flat maps or the domed map, you see this big sun and the moon. That's the only, the only reason we do that is because we have to depict them somehow because otherwise, and then of course the follow-up question is like, <clears throat> wouldn't it be light everywhere simultaneously? How do we have times zones why is it not day all the time i'm going because that sun is actually the wrong size the sun in that case would be giant to be thousands of miles wide and we're talking about 50 miles wide um the other argument is ships going over the horizon which uh, 10 years ago i would have been right there with you ships going over the horizon yep in fact you have the finest camera in the world 10 years ago zoom in well i mean go ahead well i'm sorry on that it's not just the horizon but if the ship travels further away it it, it goes below it goes below the ocean line, you sure the about horizon that? line. You're what absolutely is, sure what about that? that? Yeah. So, yeah, watch, watch some of our videos if you get a chance. Because now with HD technology, what's changed is HD technology, which is now, yeah, that boat used to be gone. But now, and I'll, I'll use the, the cameras of choice recently, which is the, uh, the Canon, or I'm sorry, Nikon, whew, Canon, Nikon P900 or the P1000, uh, which have massive zooms, like the, the P1000 is like 120 power zoom. Those boats, which used to be gone, you now can pull back into frame. They're now there again. It's like, well, what are you talking about? They should be gone permanently. Remember, behind the curve, they should, once they go over the horizon, that's it. They go over the other side of the hill. Not anymore. In fact, I put the challenge to anyone in science. I go, show me an object less than 150 miles away because there's an atmosphere thickness issue. Um, less than 150 miles away that you cannot see ever. You know, it's like, well, no, it's gone permanently. You can never, ever see it. Depending on the weather conditions, you absolutely can see that object. In fact, the only limit to our sight is the thickness of the atmosphere. Remember what we're breathing in right now is uh, what? 80% uh, nitrogen, 20% oxygen with some trace gases. Forget about that stuff. But that is, you know, it gets, it gets thick over a period of time. People say, well, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from the United States? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because it's the highest point in the world, right? I go, well, you probably could if it was a vacuum, but you can't because it's not a vacuum. It's, it's, we're living in basically a, a thin version of water. No, and people are saying, well, I don't, that doesn't make sense. I go, okay, uh, scuba divers, when you go 200 feet down on a perfectly clear day with the sun's right overhead, why is it dark? Well, because the sun can't penetrate that much water. This is a thin version of that. So, sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay, hang on. So, <laughs> um, I just want to take a step back quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do a little bit of a plug as well. I, you've got a documentary on Netflix, which I watched. It's called Behind the Curve. Da, da, da. The community hates yeah. it, by the way. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they do. And I didn't... I'll be honest, I didn't get that much science from it. It was no. mostly about you, and I forget the name of a, of, of a lady that Pat was in Patricia. it. Patricia. Patricia Steele. That's right. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was mostly about your relationship with her and the community, right. and then you had conspiracy theorists within the the movement. Right. Uh, there was that one guy, I forget his name now, I'm so sorry. Um, Bob Nodell, who, who, Jaron? The one who apparently was from NASA or something? Oh, Matt Boylan. <laughs> Otherwise known yeah. as Math Powerland, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then... And then you did a few tests, and then at the end of the at the end of the film, you did a laser a laser test, right. and it failed. Right. And and you ended the document, or the, you ended the film by saying, "Oh, that's interesting." Right. And then you just and then the credits rolled, yeah. and I, I sat there thinking, "What what just happened?" It's well, and that that's an excellent point because okay, one the power of editing because you got to remember by the time that film ended, they, they were not our friends. <laughs> they hated flight they still do and i send them stuff every time i do like an interview after i go overseas or you know i just shot a um a commercial in uh, australia <laughs> they they hate it every time i do this stuff and it's like hey you helped do this um what happened was a quick little side story uh, and i talked about it in the book which was by the time they we got to the conference the movie was almost done Right. It was supposed to just be a human interest piece. Right. It was just supposed to be about the people of Flat Earth. They didn't want to go into the nuts and bolts of it. But then there was that part. I'm sure you remember where I was up in the podium and a 12 year old kid was asking me questions from the audience. Yes. That apparently freaked them out. I didn't know yeah. this. It was in the director's commentary on the iTunes version. And they that freaked them out. They were like, OK, you know, this is basically they had to take a stand against Flat Earth right then and there which was it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. And it's like, we're not recruiting kids. I didn't ask that kid to be there or any of the other kids to be there. They just showed up and you're going to take a stand. It's like, oh, no, no, you're, you're messing with the future, which is what National Geographic said, and which is why the book the, the, the book is called Flat Earth Clues End of the World, because National Geographic asked if, if Flat Earth was going to take civilization into the new dark ages. I was like, what? Okay, sure. <laughs> Let's go with that. Um, so anyway, by the time they, they got to the end of the film, uh, they, they knew they, what stand they were going to take. So they were going to hurt us in editing any way they could. With the Jaren thing at the end, what they, the initial shot was, remember there were two experiments that Jaren did. Same, same identical experiments. First one, they, he melted the condenser on the laser because if you don't know anything about lasers, you can't have them on for very long because they, they weren't designed. They're basically supposed to be on for a certain amount of time, but if you leave them on for like 10 minutes, you could melt, you could melt them very, very easily. They, they left that out of the movie entirely. The, the first one failed. And then the second one, they, you know, he was shooting what he thought was over a flat piece of land, and it wasn't. It was, it was actually not flat. And they left that out of the movie entirely, which was now granted it was partially Jaron's fault. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mm. blame too much on the director because I didn't know until much much later that Jaron he did he didn't do a dry run on the test. That was the first time. It's like oh no, we'll just do it live. We'll just show up there live mm. at night. We'll do it the first time. And what what could go wrong? And is one like the the perfect example of why the scientific method still applies. And that is test, observe, repeat. Test, observe, repeat. You don't just do it once and then say, okay, well, that's that's it. So the test was supposed to show that a laser going straight should go from this point to this point. Uh, and if it's flat, if it's perfectly flat, then you should show it. And supposedly when he had to raise it up a little bit to where it was shown, it's like, well, does that prove a curvature? What your point was, and I love this, love that you said it just like that. I was in the, I was in the theater with a whole bunch of people and I asked them afterwards in mul multiple screenings. I go, do you know what happened? At the end of the movie they go no but something went wrong mm. they couldn't tell you what went wrong just that something went wrong and i and I, yeah, and I, it also made it look as though your own film uh was pointless exactly exactly which by the way we had nothing to do with that film we literally just signed the waivers it was done by an independent it actually worked out really really well for us uh, i called the trojan horse because almost everybody when they were first watching that movie like the 20 30 minutes into that movie everyone thought it was like a parody they thought it was like a um a piece of docufiction um i thought so too yeah yeah and like about well, i'm still i'm still on the fence no no it's absolutely well, yeah i know you, you and i we'll, we'll talk um it, they thought it was a piece of docufiction and then all of a sudden there was this montage i think it was like the mainstream montage where you know all of a sudden it's a thing and you know there are different people talking about it and people i could see them all over the theater going wait a minute there's something happening on the internet and I don't know about it. It's, it's like this big corner of the internet, which you didn't even know existed. And it's, and it's absolutely there. And, and nowadays mm. I feel, I feel envious for a lot of people that get into it for the first time now. Cause if you type in flat earth into YouTube, you just get this mm. wall of content and you're going, 
and, and, you know, stuff that's been around for two years and three years, and you're going, where did all this stuff come from? Because, <laughs> like, but, but you haven't missed it forever. It's only been around for four years. And it absolutely is real. No, I, and I'm telling you, it's staring at you right now. I'm going, look, I absolutely... You say it's been around the what? Sorry, man, I'm interrupting, but you say it's been around four years, but yeah. I'm suspecting it's been around a lot longer than that. Oh, of course. We didn't invent Flat Earth, of course. No, 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 no nothing like that. But the new version of Flat Earth, the, the social media version of Flat Earth has only been around for about four years. Uh, it, sorry, go ahead. How, no, how do I know? Okay, so hang on. <laughs> <laughs> that what, I'm real? <laughs> yes. So on the one hand, on the one hand, on the one hand, you are are positing that this is all a conspiracy, uh, not a theory, but just a conspiracy. Yeah. How do I know that you're not part of a conspiracy theory within this whole thing? No, it's a good, no, that a good not, I, That's an excellent how question. How do I know that you're not trolling me? No, no, no. <laughs> because, no, and I've had people within the community actually accuse me of that as well. Um, but why am I? And, and there have been anyone, any celebrity that talks about Flat Earth, that's like the first response. It's like, no, no, he's trolling. Like Kyrie Irving, he's trolling. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the, the the wrestlers, no, no, they're trolling, and different other athletes, and, mm. and no, no, they're mm. trolling. If I was trolling, when exactly am I going to reveal my master plan? Uh, four years is a really long time, and I've taken so many punches to the gut in the media. You know, I mean, I did the the BBC yeah, you've thing. Destroyed your, 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 you've, you've destroyed your job opportunities. Oh my God! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone? No, you cannot type. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, this, I'm in. I'm in for the for the long haul here. I'm. This is this is what I do. So no, where where where? Do you think I like being abused by the media on a regular basis? I okay. lost. I lost count of how many interviews. No, no, no. I absolutely so, believe this, and here's why. And, and I, I challenge this to everybody that, that goes out there and, and may or may not look into this. In fact, the, the very first chapter of the book is called Look Away, which is if you like your life the way it is, if you think you get a good bead thing on, on things and everything is awesome, don't look at it. I'm, I'm not, that's not reverse psychology. I'm telling you, don't look at it. Because so you're you, saying enjoy the blue pull? The, the what? Are you saying enjoy the blue pill? Oh, yeah, pill? yeah, yeah. Take the blue freaking blue pill. Yeah, the cipher, the cipher ret line from the Matrix. Absolutely. It's like, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? Uh, because everybody that goes into this tries to debunk it. Everybody, this shows the power of the topic itself. Everybody goes into it hating it. It's like, no, this is the stupidest thing ever. I can shoot this down. It's kind of like watching a guy sit in a park, or a woman, you know, all God's children, I'm not judging. Whoever's sitting on a park bench and they're playing with like a child's toy, like a puzzle, and they're having a really tough time with it. And from a distance, you're looking, it's like, this guy's a moron. <laughs> it's like, why can't he solve this puzzle? Right? And eventually you see him get really frustrated. He slams the thing down on the bench and he walks away. And you, you walk up, you look around, you walk up to the puzzle and you're going, I got this. The longer you stare at it, the more complex it becomes. So the, the short, I've got a lot of short versions for you. Uh, the short version is this. <laughs> if... No, no, I'm serious. <laughs> Which is, can I prove to you that the earth is flat right now? No, I cannot. Can't prove it to you. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat earth model? Yeah, I can. I can do that all, all day long. And people in science are like, well, no, reasonable doubt isn't good enough. It's like, oh, no. In court, every hour of every day, reasonable doubt wins. It always will. So the question, and which is why the community has been growing and growing and growing, because it, and you saw the documentary. We can't even agree on exactly the finer points of the model, but all mm. we can do, which is why I use the Scottish Highlands reference. At the end of the day, we all hate the English. At the end of the day, we all hate the globe. That's what we all can agree on. It's like no, we absolutely know it's not a globe. Now, what exactly it is? In fact, we it's I'm not kidding. It's it's like seventy thirty. Um, so only seventy percent of us even believe that it's a dome. It's, you know, that it's a, a snow globe. But there's another 30%, mostly because they don't like being fenced in, uh, that don't even believe mm -hmm. in, a, in a, you know, that we're in a building. It's just like a flat open plane. But that's how it starts. Everybody tries to shoot okay. it down. Sorry, go ahead. All right. No. Okay. No. So before we, before we go too complicated, I want to get to the nuts and bolts, but I want to, yeah. I want to kind of start at, at the basics. So obviously there are piles of, questions that you've dealt with over the years yeah. and the very obvious ones but let's just get them out of the way and the basic stuff what is this flat earth model that that you pro well, i mean i want to say propose is that 
What, what's your, what we're talking Senate? about, let's, I'll give you, again, this is a podcast, so I'll try to do the best I can without visuals, but, but there's tons and tons of models you can look up online. Again, whatever I'm saying here, seriously, type in online, you'll see a bunch of references. What we're talking about would be a, do you have uh, covered sports stadiums down there in, in Joburg? Uh, sports stadiums. Sports, sports stadiums, sports like, stadiums. you know, where they play football? Yes. Are they, are they like covered, like, uh, or are they open mostly? Oh, uh, mostly open because it doesn't rain. Mostly open. Okay, well we yeah, have we have yeah. enclosed stadiums where we, we if we have cities up here where it rains and snows, mm -hmm. and so uh, we have enclosed stadiums. Imagine a, a, an enclosed stadium like that, and inside that stadium is a giant saltwater lake, and in that saltwater lake are a bunch of islands, which would be the continents in this case. Uh, the star, the sun, and the moon are just lights in the sky along with the planets. And the stars. Okay, so, so it's flat with a dome. Yep, yep. No diff, no different. I mean, again, I, I, whatever, whatever model works best for you in terms of what you've seen. So when I say planetarium, most people don't know what a planetarium is. When I say terrarium, maybe. When I say snow globe, I hope to God everybody's seen a snow globe in their life. You can buy them mm. anywhere. But imagine a snow globe which is isn't doesn't have that high of an arc, which is much wider and much shallower in terms of uh, the ceiling, something like that. And. Okay, so uh, hang on. I want to get this. I want to get this straight. Yep. So it's flat, yep. more or less, yep. with a with a dome. And my understanding is that it's surrounded by the Antarctic ice wall. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in fact, don't even call it the ice wall. I, I know people have been latching onto that in the media because of the whole Game of Thrones thing. Uh, mm. But it, seriously, they really have. Uh, but we're talking about yeah, the Antarctic continent is the only th continent that doesn't look even remotely like everything else. It is so a, it's not a continent; it's just it's a wall, just, essentially. Well, some it's, sort of some sort of yeah, it's a ring, but it's much much thicker than you might think. So the beginning, the coastline of Antarctica is just the beginning. It would go thousands of miles inland, which kind of was how the the story for a lot of people how it started, which was the United States and the Soviet Union started looking for this thing the outer marker that started back in 1928 and they flew around in antarctica for basically 30 years and they finally figured it out around the end of the 1950s almost 1960 which uh, an operation uh, uh called deep freeze public knowledge you know they they was like they've been doing missions out there our our greatest admiral admiral richard bird that's what he did for 30 years he basically just flew in his plane out in antarctica and when they figured it out they locked out antarctica with the antarctic treaty the only unbroken treaty ever and then militarized space but we can get into that so but I live in Cape Town, which is at the bottom tip of the African continent, sure. and ships ships travel from here to the Antarctic. Sure. And I know people who've done that. Sure. So, uh, what is what is the? Oh no no you the, can you can go there, um you, but it, and when it comes to corporations, nothing nobody owns and one was really weird. Find me another piece of real estate anywhere in the world that nobody owns, which is really really weird. And considering how big it is, and they say, well, no, it's it's chopped up equally. It's no, it's chopped up equally that way. If anyone wants to do something, you have to have approval from all the other nations. No corporation is allowed to set up shop in Antarctica ever. The only people that are down there allowed are the, uh, the assi researchers. Uh, yeah, researchers, military scientists, the military, and the occasional tourist that wants to take their picture with some penguins, you know, on the peninsula. That's it. Is 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 that because? Is that because if you go too far, you reach the the Truman Show style edge of the dome? Yeah, yeah. That's that's basically it. And and, and, and I honestly, I don't blame them. Which is, think of it this way, let's say you own uh, British Petroleum, which is a fascinating, which I talked about in The Clues, I don't know, I, I know you saw the documentary, I don't know if you watched The Clues, mm -hmm. which is, I, I talked about the Antarctic Treaty and I said, okay, you own British Petroleum and you know that there's massive amounts of resources in Antarctica. Not only are you not allowed to go down there, you're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the part that blew me away. Look, this this world is run by greed and money and power. We all know that. It's like in the United States, we lobby for everything. If you want, if if they want to start fracking in my backyard tomorrow, you know what fracking is, right? If they yeah, want to start fracking yeah, yeah. my backyard, they could absolutely do it. They could make that happen. And yet, these same companies, with all their massive amounts of liquid assets, are not allowed to even talk about it. If I was in British Petroleum, I would run a front page, a full page ad in the London Times every month saying how great it would be for our con you know company to go down there it is unbroken cannot be okay so and this effect's not even up for review until 2040. what is this dome made of and how did it get there and how old is it it's extremely old old way older than us oh yeah sorry i should qualify this 
uh, we didn't make this place. Not even close. Humans had nothing to do. I kind of use, I take the line from uh, Contact. You remember the, uh, the, the, uh, the movie where when she finally meets the alien, whoever it is, and he says, and she goes, she goes, did you build this? You know, the, this whole tram system. And he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. It was here when we got here. Um, so what? It, it could have been extraterrestrial. Well, to, at that point, it, you have to redefine what an extraterrestrial is. Because we're talking about a self-contained system. We're not talking about planets that actually exist material-wise. That, that Mar you can't land on Mars and Jupiter and Venus and Saturn. They're just lights in the sky. Now, who built it? Okay. They don't exist. Are they they, sorry, exist, sorry. Hang on, they hang on. exist only as lights. Only as, okay, but only as images. So they're, are they props? Yeah, so much, yeah. No different than a planetarium. You go into a planetarium. Do you see the Jupiter, the moons of Jupiter? Yes, you do. Can you land on Jupiter in a planetarium? No, you can't. And you say, well, that doesn't, no. make, doesn't make any difference because we're in a building. I say, when you walk out of that building, who says you aren't in a much bigger building? This, we've talked about this in science fiction concepts for years, although we've never made a movie about it. But hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. I, my wife and I went to a little town here in South Africa called Sutherland. Yeah. Um, it's it's basically one of our astronomical hubs mm -hmm. it's in the middle it's kind of in the middle of nowhere um it's and they've got a whole bunch of uh observatories and satellites and they're busy building all kinds of interesting space stuff there sure. uh it's it's one of our sort of scientific claims to fame um at least on the african continent yeah uh and i've been there mm -hmm. and i looked through telescopes mm -hmm. and i literally looked at Saturn yep. and I saw the ring the ring around Saturn yep. and the moons yep. but the ring goes around so it goes be behind the planet right how do you how do you explain that I, the, what is that I, I believe the question you're looking for is if all the planets in our solar system appear spherical then why yeah. aren't we spherical kind of kind of like that Okay. Ba yes, basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, I could yeah, boil yeah. that question down, which is like, look, I, I and believe me, I have talked to many an amateur astronomer, and they've all said the same thing. It's like, look, I've seen the moons of Jupiter, I've seen the rings of Saturn, blah 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 blah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know, I get it. You're just looking at an image, and that's all you're looking at. I mean, again, we 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 can simulate this, and we have been simulating this now in planetarium since oh wow, the 1970s with simple technology. Imagine if you had technology that I don't know was 50,000 years, you know, our technology evolved 50,000 years, what we could do. Think about this. We didn't even have HD televisions 20 years ago and what we can do now. You show an HD television to somebody back, I don't know, back in the 1950s, they'd freak out. It looks so real. So what, we, yes, but yes, short version is you are looking at a projection, no different than anything that we can do now, only much, much bigger. The engineering is far more advanced. Who built it? You have only two choices. One is an advanced civilization that's much larger and much more powerful than ourselves. Something we've talked about in sci-fi for years. Or And this is a game that we're in. Some sort of simulation. Simulation, experiment, uh, petri dish. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, only that we're on the inside and we can't get out. So the Matrix okay, so reference kind of falls apart. Okay, I've, I've got a <laughs> bunch of questions. I know, I know. Go ahead, take your time. Can I? Can I ask? Can I just ask Throw a whole bunch of questions? The, the, the comments, the comments are going berserk. I, I won't get to them just yet. I know. Um, <laughs> you probably won't because those they will not stop. No, no, no. All right. Um, the most, the most obvious questions I have to ask you, and I'm sorry if you've been asked these before. No, no, no. Okay, it's, so it's what I do. It's all right. Has anybody ever been to the edge? of where this dome is has anybody been beyond it what's on the outside officially and or unofficially um officially okay, well no the public's definitely not going to go again why the antarctic treaty is so strong uh as far as the only people that have probably seen it united states soviet union i, I probably you know admiral bird definitely and his team uh, as far as what's beyond it uh, I try to live one world at a time. <laughs> so all I know is that when they found it, they tried to bust through it for four years and it was practically public knowledge. They, they hid it in plain sight, which was look up the uh, high altitude atomic weapons program or uh, high altitude nuclear. I don't want to screw up the pronunciation because the Americans wrecked that one. Uh, high altitude nuclear testing from 1958 to 1962. All the testing from for those four years between the United States and the Soviet Union were straight up. They were firing straight up. Nobody did ground tests. All they did was fire up. 
for four years. And that was for one reason and one reason only. That was, one, to punch through it with the early megaton shots. And then after that, the low kiloton shots was to paint the sky, which was which turned out to be very, very helpful because every rocket, you have to figure out where the, the arc is, the curvature of this thing, because when you send up rockets, you can't have them going straight up. So what, so look at, look in at, the, sorry, go ahead. So in the center, it'll be at, at its highest point then, if it's, an, if it's a dome. <sighs> Potentially, yes. Unless, I'm hoping. Unless, unless it's infinite. Someone in the comments suggested that something it's about infinite. an yeah. infinite and those, plane. And those people, again, not knocking those people that, that say they're infinite. Those are the people that get claustrophobic when I say dome. Because there have been a number of people over the years that said, you're turning the universe into a one-room apartment. And I'm starting to freak out. And I go, well, it's a very big one-room. It's like a giant studio apartment, so you're fine. But the problem you have is if you don't have a dome, you have to deal with the um, gravity versus the vacuum of space question which science to this day will not answer. Uh, I'll give it to you really, really quick. You ready? You'll, you'll like this. Mm. And that is, I won't, I won't do this as simple. The, the, sh the, the long version is, why is our atmosphere still here if the vacuum of space exists? Pressure versus non-pressure cannot exist. There has to be a container, and which means it has to be ripped off. And you say, well, no, no. I'll go, okay, I'll give you the smaller version. You ready? The second, do you have a second story of your house or where you're living? Is there a second? Uh, I actually have a, a two-story house. Perfect, perfect. Yes. Okay. You make the second story of your house into a vacuum chamber. And right above you, you put a big cork with a handle on it and you pop it. What happens? Everybody knows a million times out of a million times, the air is going to equalize. It's going to be instant. It's going to be violent. Maybe black out, maybe even die. I don't know. But it's going to be instant. Nobody questions but that. That's the same as an airplane. If you, if you yeah, 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 yeah. Any, anything with pressure versus non-pressure. But the house, you'll, you'll understand the house version why. And, and, and they say, what's your point? My point is, is that why didn't gravity keep the air in your room right now? And you say, well, because the equalization. I go, that's my point. My point is space is a giant, giant, giant vacuum chamber. Huge, way bigger than the one that's right above your house right now. So how is our atmosphere still here? I have never gotten a satisfactory a answer from any scientist, well, which is where does our atmosphere end and the bleeding edge of space begin? It cannot exist that way. It cannot. It well, as, yeah, so as you know, I'm a cartoonist. I'm not a scientist. But my question based on that comment might be, well, wouldn't gravity be why the didn't, reason again, why, why didn't gravity every... perfect why didn't gravity keep the atmosphere in your room with that very small chamber above you why didn't it do it it's the same gravity in fact not only is it the same gravity it's identical you're in the exact same place and science they just blow me off no offense you know to you you're not supposed to answer that question but that's when anyone ever mm. says you know gravity versus the atmosphere of space i threw five questions here let me throw some out real quick i mm, threw up shoot i threw up five questions to a georgetown physicist it was set up I, I was completely unsolicited by a german television team and they said okay give me five questions we can give a physicist we got a guy we got a guy who'll debate you it's like right on because science really doesn't like debating this and i said okay gravity versus the vacuum of space long distance photography the moon eclipse shadow is way too small the moon temperature is cold which doesn't make any damn sense and the van allen radiation belts are they deadly or not deadly if they're deadly then how the americans get past them if they're not deadly why do the americans say that they're super deadly i threw out those five questions i know that's the really short version uh to this guy and he folded like a card table and that was it the segment never aired the germans went away angry and that was it no one to this day i have never had an academic come at me with any any po you know positive answers to any of those things well, obviously, I can't answer that, but I do have a question. So I've got a couple of questions I want to throw. Yeah, okay, so it. if we're inside this this dome, right? Can you tell me what global warming then is all about? Ooh, climate change. That's a good one, and, and I'm so I'm glad you asked that um, because over the in fact, it really surprised me over the last couple of years, really since the documentary came out. Um, people have asked me, "Do you believe that climate change is real?" And I say, "Well." I can't, you know, I can't obviously guarantee you that it's real. I mean, it's interesting that up in Seattle, I was getting a tan last Halloween, which is weird because it, I should have been, I should have died from exposure from wind and rain. And I literally was getting a tan all week. Um, but doesn't the whole term greenhouse gases make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse? Not this kind of soft, fuzzy, oh yeah, the, the, the gases are hovering at this certain altitude and that's what's trapping things in. Doesn't it make a lot more sense if it's an actual physical building? Because if it is a physical building, oh yeah, then, then what we're doing inside here would actually have a huge effect on it. Even if it was an automated mechanical system, it's, we're going to have an effect on it. I mean, come on, we're having the, the car engines, no offense to electric cars, 
but the car engine is just a tiny furnace <laughs> and it's br and we have billions of these things running all the time what do you think's gonna happen it's no different than taking a propane lantern into your car you know while the air conditioning is running the air conditioner is going to have to compensate for that propane lantern sooner or later and it's going to create hot spots and cold spots so do i think it's real probably sure why not but it's manipulated artificially <laughs> you mean you mean is it being compensated for or well you mean uh, well it's been it's been adjusted artificially by whoever built this place actually yes actually i guess that's my next question yeah, yeah, then. Yeah. who 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 are the beneficiaries then of the system i guess you can't answer that <laughs> who well again who built it or what did they get out of it i, I su probably both I suppose both. But yeah probably both <laughs> um who built it again it's and I, I'm not trying to be tongue in cheek when I say this. Did God build it or did God subcontract out the work? Are you religious, Mark? I am. I am, but I wasn't for a long time. And by the way, I've also got to mention that I, at least in the United States, um, at least half of our members and they didn't talk about it, they deliberately did not talk about this in the documentary are hardcore Christians. I can't speak for the other four major religious houses of the world, but. Uh, at least when it comes to Christianity, uh, yeah, half of them are, are real. Half of our members are really, really into it. And for the simple, simple reason that is if it was built, meaning if it's a inorganic structure, if it's a building, mm. then it was built and it was built. Okay. It was built by someone, which if you were already into God, the, the thinking of the idea of God, it completely reinforces it. I mean, it takes you from 90% okay. to 98%. And if you're not, it brings you back into it somehow. Now, not necessarily into Christianity, but it brings you back into spirituality. I was into IT for 20 years. Church? I don't have time for church. I still don't really go to church much, but I think about the concept of God a whole lot more. Um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff I want to ask you, and the time is going way too quickly. Do you have a few more minutes? To... Yeah, yeah, we can go over. That's fine. That's can fine. you can you go over? Yeah, okay, yeah, fantastic. Okay, because I got some stuff. Yes, I've got so much I stuff I want to ask. I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over for you just because you told me that story about the um, uh, about the actor from the, uh, the District Nine. Um. Yes. 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 So so, so so for those for those who are listening now, um, just before we went live, I was I was telling Mark um, a story about Shalter Copley from District Nine. Uh, Mark was saying that uh, District Nine is uh, one of his favorite uh, sci-fi films. Yeah. That's correct, hey Mark? Yeah, the one of the perfect sci-fi films ever ever made. And yeah, how you snuck into a press junket, kudos. So yeah, yeah. you take as much so, time as you so, want. So the, those who don't know, uh, the, the the very short story is that I I pretended to be a journalist and I uh, did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Charlotte Copley when he did a, a press junket in South Africa um, when he was promoting District Nine and the A Team. But uh, I'll I'll talk about that another time. Okay. It's a great story. No. Um, but I want to quickly get back now yep. to to some questions I have for you. Okay, so I live I live at the bottom tip of the continent, right. and I'm. I suppose in geographical terms, fairly close to the Antarctic. Right. If I were to stand on top of Table Mountain with a very strong telescope, right. why is it that I cannot see the Antarctic if, if it's flat? Your vision is limited. Again, it's the design of this place. The design of this, uh, this world is ingenious. There is some really, really cool design aspects. I mean, one, of course, would be the 3% salt solution in the ocean, which limits uh, exploration to like 97% or more, which is amazing. Um, but as far as why you can't see, like, well, for your, another example would be uh, why can't you see Japan from California and why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because Mount Everest is the tallest place there is. You should be able to see if there's nothing obstructing it. And that is you are, what we are breathing in, what we're talking in is only 99.99% transparent. You, we are talking and living in basically a thin version of water. We're living in kind of, of a soup, which is it, it's 80% night. Most people don't even know this. We're not, you're barely even breathing oxygen right now. It's 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. Forget about the trace gases. I like the, the, the easy mm. to remember stuff. I don't care about the five or six trace gases. So then what that means is it has a thickness to it which means that it over time it gets 90%, 80%, 70% transparent and further and further to where eventually it just blurs out. No different than when you are in water. We've all seen footage of uh, scuba divers taking um, shots of whales at a distance. Well, they get about 300 yards away and that's it. They just fade away because the, the water is so freaking thick. 
Uh, what we're breathing is not very thick, but it's thick enough to where you cannot see. I think that the, the maximum range at sea level has got to be, can't be much more than 150 miles. We've done some tests at about 100, 120. I think at 150, it's maxed out. But my point is, if, if it was a vacuum, if theoretically, if you pulled out all the atmosphere, oh, yeah. And I think that's part of the design, which is that would th completely throw people. Because if it was a vacuum, if we didn't have to breathe this, then we would be able to see very, very far. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my answer short. Bef no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I don't mind. Um, before I ask my next question, because as I said, I've got a bunch of questions. How Everything that you're saying sounds unfalsifiable. So in other words, you can you can make the claim and I can't prove it wrong or nobody can. If you talk about a dome, no one can get, can, can someone get to the top and touch it? Can they fly high enough? Well, for no, example? for, well, for several reasons. One the civilian market can't get anywhere close anyway. And I don't care if you're Elon Musk or not, which is a whole other thing. Ah, South African. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should talk about Elon Musk because there's a lot of Americans that think he's American. It's like, does the accent not do anything for you? He's not from here, but whatever, even though he doesn't talk, uh, South, Africanese is that what you call? So um, <laughs> no, mil the space is militarized, and that that's the big thing. Which is uh, look, civilian aircraft. We're talking about something that's very very high up there. So civilian aircraft cap it at about ten miles. Spy airplanes, if you believe them, maybe twenty miles, and then after that, it's all military. So as long as the military controls space, which was the entire point of NASA back in the day, back in 1958 when it was formed, then no, no, that, that part is unfalsifiable. You're absolutely right. And a lot of these things are. Again, remember what I, remember I said, it's not that I can prove it to you, but I can create so much doubt in it that you're going but to be thinking about how do you know, Mark? The what? How do you know? How, how do you know what you're saying? Because, because the reasonable doubt got to me. How's that? Um, because every if if I started out like everybody else started out with way, way less material, what I did was I, again I thought the same thing. I said flat Earth is stupid. I can blow it away in three days. I'm going to finally check this thing off my bucket list because I, I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of. Some I like, some I don't like. Mm. Uh, but this one is like nobody even wants to look at it. I mean, seriously, I said in my clues, I said, look, I know people that absolutely are convinced that the royal family of England are made up of lizards. Convinced of this. And yet it sounds I, like David Icke. Well, yeah, but but I would in fact, in fact, David Icke's a great example. And yet I could go up to someone like that and say, oh, yeah, what about flat earth? And you'd be like, get the hell out of here. It's like, really? Because you were just telling me about lizards. But this isn't believable. And for me, it is it's the reason I absolutely believe it in my heart is because I can't shoot it down and nobody else yeah. could after me. Meaning I just put I literally it was like a cry for help. I said, OK. I can't solve this. The internet hive mind is brilliant in, in, in their collective consciousness. And I put the videos out there and I said, blow it away, kill it mm. and tell me where I went wrong. And I really, I was just waiting, waiting by the phone. I put my address out there, my phone number, my real name, every inf bit of information you could think of. And people yeah. started calling me saying, I mean, the subject matter experts were amazing. They kept calling me saying, you know what? I mean, pilots and engineers and, and uh, air traffic controllers, surveyors, they all kept saying the same thing. They're going, you know what? This isn't that crazy. Here's why. It's like, what? Why aren't you blowing this thing? And it's like, this. I don't want this to be real. And then it just got reinforced and reinforced yeah. to where here we are four years later. And um, I need to just take a quick moment and I have to ask you one or two questions from the comments. The comments are going ape. Uh, oh, sorry. Wait, in South Africa, we can't say ape. So it's, it's going berserk. Yep, going berserk. We can't we can't say ape either, believe it or not. Ah, uh, OK. All right. OK. 2019. Um, all lives matter. 2019. Everyone's politically correct. Right. All God's <laughs> okay, children. Um, all right. So one of the one of the comments is someone says, yeah, he's flown over the Arctic Circle and he didn't see a wall. That's the Arctic. That's Arctic, the Arctic Circle. Ar Arctic so the, 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 the North. Be in the middle. Which would be the center. This And by the way, the center is a really interesting thing anyway, because Admiral Byrd supposedly went there in 1926. And whatever he found there, exactly over the North Pole, which is weird because most flights most flights divert over the geographic North Pole, which is really weird. But whatever he found, that's when the United States Navy just sent him to, the, to Antarctica and said, oh, you're spending the rest of your life here. So, so Mark, which way is north? We what? Which way is north? <sighs> Sorry. Um, I mean, there is I there the technically compass, we, we have to invent new terms for this. Um, there is no there the is compass, no north, points... south, north, south, east, west is irrelevant now. There is the center, and then there's the outer rim. 
Meaning... No, but if I'm holding a compass, if I hold a compass, it's pointing... Mag well, yeah, but that's because the compass was made when everyone thought that north was actually a... a, a a definition now that the compass, so the compass po points to the center if you want to call it north that's fine everybody's used to north it's comfortable fine say north but okay when it but comes, then what is south there is no south everything's south technically <laughs> technically it's north at the center and everything south or everything is the outer edge and we only say south because we don't have another term for it i would just put o instead of s the out the outer rim that's where it is. And by the way, there is what's like weird, by the way, ask, watch some wonderful videos on YouTube that has nothing to do with us, um, where they ask people in Antarctica, what does the compass do when it gets to Antarctica? It's like pff, weird stuff. It doesn't really do anything. There should be a magnetic Man. south and it doesn't exist. Why not? Mark, I feel like I'm having an acid trip here. Okay, I, know, right? I need to quickly ask you another question. Uh, people do drugs from the comments. <laughs> Because they also <laughs> They do. I've seen, they I've heard a radio guy break out a thing of whiskey from his drawer. <laughs> it's like oh, okay. finished already. There... <laughs> I've had guy. I had an interview get canceled because the guys just started blazing up, and they became completely incoherent by the time it was over. All right. Um. Uh. Okay. So I'm just quickly scrolling through the comments. I don't want to take too long on them. Yeah, Something about global warming. We've gone past that already. Um. All right. I'll come back to the comments. I. <laughs> I want to get back to my conversation with you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you tell me about a lunar eclipse? I'm sure you've been asked this. Oh, yeah, How yeah, does that yeah. Work? The lunar eclipse. Okay. Uh, well, solar eclipse is actually better, but the lunar eclipse. The lunar eclipse shadow is too small. Uh, that's the short version. I got a chance to spend a time uh, in the blackout zone during the Great American Eclipse, you know, because we like branding things. Uh, and that is it actually, but it was cool. It did. The eclipse traveled diagonally from the northwest all the way down to Florida, which covered the, uh, a big swath through the United States. But what's interesting is the lunar eclipse shadow is only 70 miles wide, the blackout zone. And you're saying, okay, what's mm. the point? I go, well, the moon is 2,000 miles wide. So why is the eclipse zone only 70 miles wide? And and you can look up any scientific diagram and they say, well, it convexes the shadow and it funnels it down like a magnifying glass into this one blackout zone 70 miles wide. I go, or it could be like we say it is, that the moon is around 70 miles wide. Because remember, when you're walking in a sunny day down in South mm. Africa against a wall, your shadow you, you know, always is either actual size or larger. It never becomes smaller. It's like you walking next to a wall and your mm. shadow of you walking shrinks down to the size of a micro machine. And that doesn't exist. And you're saying, well, you know, the scientific explanation. I go, okay, fine. If you want to latch on to that, tell me the flip side, which is if the, if the Earth is front of, in front, remember, we'll reverse it. Instead of the moon being in front, let's say the Earth is in front, right? Well, the Earth is only mm -hmm. 8,000 miles wide. That means the blackout zone should only be about four times as wide, which would be about 250 miles wide. We should see a blackout zone on the moon. Uh, and you would be you don't even need binoculars to see it you should see a blackout zone that's only about 250 miles wide we never see it we always see this giant red thing that covers it no one ever explains that to me it's like why why shouldn't it be the same why isn't the same but hang on in this dome yes. is the sun inside this dome or is it on the outside i'm gonna say yes because it could be either, to be honest, yes, to we're, we're still working out the details on that because at this point we're wondering if is the sun even three-dimensional or is it just a two-dimensional light source that's being jacked in from something else? Meaning the, the sun is basically an incandescent light bulb and the moon is a LED bulb, which I should explain for in a second. Which is, yeah, what's powering it? <sighs> listen, to, listen to a guy named Eric Dollard. He explains it probably the best. He's going, he goes, I don't know what, he's not one of ours. Uh, he said, he said this years ago, he said, he goes, I don't know what the sun is. He goes, but it's, there's no fusion happening up there. He goes, it's getting powered from something else. I mean, technically the light on your ceiling, right? Where is it getting the power from? You don't know. It's just wires going to the ceiling. Um, but what I thought was more interesting, let me run it real quick here, is the moon. The moon is generating, the moon isn't reflecting the sun's light. When you see the moon up in the sky, it's self-illuminated. And by that, I mean it's generating a cold light. And you say, no, no, the, it's cold at night. No, no, no. In fact, I was in Flat Earth almost a year, and somebody brought this up to me, and I, I said, get the hell out of here. So I'll use Fahrenheit for you real quick. So it, we all know that in the sunlight, it's like 90 degrees in the sun, 80 degrees in the shade, right? Because whatever object blocks the sun, right? It's cooler in the shade, always cooler in the shade. It's the exact opposite in the moon. So it's 50 degrees in the moonlight. It's up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in the moon shade. And that shouldn't be. At very least, it should be neutral. It should never, ever go negative. In fact, I was the one that first postulated. I said, okay, what happens if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight? Because we take it to sunlight, you can burn paper and ants and, and your friend. 
right? But if you take it to moonlight, does it get warmer? Does it get even colder? It gets colder. And you can test this all day long uh, with point and click $20 thermometers from uh, the grocery store or, water, you know, little digital thermometers and water. It's amazing. That's, but does that prove a flat earth? No, it doesn't. But it absolutely blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon. And it helps us a great deal, which means the sun and the moon are completely autonomous from each other, which they would be because they're so damn tiny. But, but why is an eclipse always circular then? Why is an eclipse circular in a planetarium? Because we just make it circular. That's it. I mean, waxing and waning crescents. We see, we see the circle. It's like, look, it's being fake. Eventually, you're going to, you, you have to come back to the same thing, which is all the world's a stage. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about an illusion that was created for us. A big sound stage for some reason. I, why don't want to call it an experiment? You want to call it entertainment? I don't know. It feels like school to me, though. It can really only be one of three things. It can either be entertainment, which I don't think is the case because a lot of people aren't having fun. Um, it could be confinement, which would be like a prison planet or a prison world, which doesn't really make sense because it's a really nice place. I mean, honestly, there's some really wonderful places. It feels more like school where you, we're here to learn something. But that's a bigger picture for another time. Can you explain to me then Earth's magnetic field? Earth's magnetic field. Okay. Um... If this was a dome, then everything regarding the magnetics would be controlled from below. So, what do you mean well, below? Well, well, so meaning, what, meaning, under the ocean? Well, and, and by why I say below, meaning, okay, so gravity, which is a whole other thing. Uh, science would say, let's we'll start with gravity real fast. Science will. Hang on, hang on. Does gravity exist? Yeah, I, I believe it exists. But it does there's, again, there's some argument in the Flyers community. They say it's not gravity, it's density. Because if it is an enclosed system, density could account for a lot of it. Which means if you're in a pressurized so system, then things rise or fall depending on the, the density of the object. No different than you take a, a ball and you put it in water. Why does it pop back up? Density. But do I think there's gravity tied to it? Yes, uh, I do. Um, let's look at it this way. Science will say they can't tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does. They can only tell you the symptoms. And, and they say, and they say, well, gravity is this magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a ball. And I say, oh, gravity is a magical molecular force that just pulls things straight down. Uh, when it comes to magnetism, which is just really tied to gravity directly, the only difference I have is that um, the moon has nothing to do with the tides. Meaning if you were going to control water and the tides in some sort of system like this, you would definitely not attach a directional magnetic force to a tiny object like that. You just do it down below and then say, and when the moon does its thing, remember the, the sky is just a giant clock system, but everything else is mechanical. So, but the magnetic fields supposedly create the aurora. What is that now? Is that just part of the theatrics? Yep. Yeah. Everything in the sky is just a giant, beautiful elaborate clock system that uh, uh signs and wonders the seasons i mean it's it's, it's the perfect clock it, it it transcends all language you don't need you don't need a language to understand how that clock works eventually you will figure it out over time and we've shown that over years and years and years and thousands of years people have figured it out it's like oh okay when the moon's here this means this when the stars are here this means this and then only later do we invent the clock which is so simple by comparison so what's holding the sun and the moon in place? Uh, well, you, you alluded that you're not quite uh, certain not, no, where no the sun idea. is. No idea what's holding it in place. I mean, is it some sort of unified field engine? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's assuming that it's actually a physical object that's being held by something. I mean, you could do it. I mean, come on. You're into sci-fi. You know you could do it several different ways if you wanted to. The easiest way would be not to have it being held by anything. It's just a, a, a light. It's, it's a projection that emits light. Then, okay, I suppose you're this is not this, what sorry, you expected, you've... is it? <laughs> no, because you were there was thinking it's like no, flat Earth isn't re you know real. I'm fake. Good night, everybody. So, no, no, I... <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. You're not going to sleep. Don't, here. don't look into this. Seriously, man. No, no, don't no, look no. Into I'm, it. I'm just so I'm not don't quite certain book. what to do with all this information. It's, <laughs> it's so strange. Well, no, no. Think of it um, this way: it's it 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 takes a while. The average person, when they first get into flat Earth, and I'm warning your listeners. No, I'm not getting into any flat Earth. Let me just say oh, that. No, no, no. <laughs> You're thinking about it though. Yeah, you wait. You would be like, no, this isn't real, and I'll look this up. This isn't real, and I'll look this. Up. That's how everybody starts. It's like I will Google NASA. I will Google gravity. I will Google Elon Musk. 
and I will you'll start doing these things so, and you'll start finding these loose threads. You're like, well, th- we 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 in South Africa are quite protective over Elon Musk. Are you saying he's an actor? No, I'm not saying he's an actor. I'm saying he's a fraud. <laughs> He's, he's awful. Well, come on. So we, he's we, rockets, remember, okay, everything. No, there, there's a wonderful. Not, no, you can be protective thing. of them all you want, but there's a headline that ran in the New York Post that, that literally said, I was so happy they did this. And I'm not, look, if, if he's a national hero, great, fantastic. Uh, but it said Elon Musk is a total fraud. Here's why. He has never followed through on anything he has ever said he was going to do. Ever. But his rockets, his rockets went to the space station. By the way, did they? the space station, does it exist? Uh, only in that there's something up there, but there's nobody in it. I mean, could it be? Is there something flying up there? Sure. sure. But Mark Shuttleworth, you know who he is. Shut- he, Shuttle- he's the guy who developed Ubuntu uh, for Linux. He comes from um, a, a suburb that's very close to where I live. Right. He, he literally went to the space station. Right. Is he a billionaire? Yes. No. <laughs> then he didn't. Sorry, unfortunately, anyone that says they you know Mark Shuttleworth. You, 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 oh no, I've heard you, I've heard the name, but no. It, sorry, if he's a billionaire, he has too much to lose. He signs the the, the waivers, and no, he hasn't gone anywhere. The, so he he didn't go to the space station. Nope. Tell me how space suit works. Tell tell. Okay, first off, in fact, I know we're running out of time, but why does everybody, no, 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 why does everybody no, 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 you, can, so we'll wait? Do you time. you well no let's let's go let's go a step further let's go older. You believe the Americans went to the moon? Why? I know inside the United States, it's required. We have to believe that. But outside of the United States, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? Because you saw it on television? No, but that's like asking, why do I believe Caesar, Julius Caesar existed? No, it's part no, of no, 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 no. What? <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad example. That's not a bad example. Um, but no, the Americans... The, I wasn't alive when, when man landed on the moon. No, oh, but, on, but, but the photo, the the fo- the what I'm saying is the photos and everyone should be suspect of the Americans. I swear to God, we, we lie about all sorts of stuff when it comes to our government. But when it, the, the photos and the videos from the Apollo have aged so terribly that I mean, we've been chewing those things up way before this. We were, you know, the, we, in fact, our own people were suspect of it starting about the late 1970s because the photos didn't make any damn sense and neither did the videos. There's so many holes. And I'll, I'll send you an image after we're done. It's like, find mm. me how many things wrong are in this photo, right? And I, and you say, well, what do you mean? I go, well, there's at least six things wrong. It doesn't make sense. Sorry, the space station. Look at the mm. interior shots of the space station. There are so many production mistakes. Remember, moviemistakes.com, that's for movies, right? Coffee cup moves, this is over here. People make mistakes in movies all the time because they're shot out of sequence. There should be no mistakes in real life. The news should not have production mistakes because it's real remember and we've been just destroying the iss i mean hell we could destroy it alone just on iss hairspray which is look at the women's hair in the it should be flowing naturally and it's put up like the bride of freaking frankenstein it's permed in fact why which is a whole other thing why do they even have hair at all the filtration systems wouldn't allow it how does a space suit work it defies the law of thermodynamics meaning pressure needs a container right you have a basketball in your hand, right? Why can't you fold that basketball? Because it's got pressure on the inside. We can't fold it, right? Yes. Why does a spacesuit not turn into a basketball? How is a spacesuit completely flexible in a vacuum? Their arms and legs work. Perfect articulation points. Their fingers work. They can manipulate complex electronics. It, it's, it's stunning. And it's because the reason why is because most the average person doesn't know anything about physics. They don't know mathematics. And they don't know engineering. And that's what they decided. It's like, you know what? The average person doesn't know any of this stuff. Let's just put it on television. It'll work. It'll totally work. And for the most part, it did until recently with the internet. You just reminded me now of that guy called Felix Baumgartner. Oh, the Red Bull jump. Awesome. Perfect point. Felix Baumgartner. You can look up this image all the time. And I've talked to people in the media about this. In fact, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the face of science in the world, right? He, he was angry about this because he's like going... Because they used a fisheye lens, which is, of course, called, otherwise known as a peephole lens. You know, when you look through in your hotel room out well, of... Well, they use they use GoPros. That, well, yeah, GoPros. But it's the same sort of lens, which is, you know, it, it creates this massive curvature, you know, to get more of an angle. It's a wide it's a wide angle lens. And he's like, remember, he's only 120,000 feet up. And the, the, the angle, the, the image they're showing makes him look like he's four or 500 miles up. And he's only 20 miles up. So why did they use it? Why did they get allowed? And media to all, I go, I, I've talked to people in media and they, I go, why did you use that when you know it's not real? They go, well, it's a better shot. It's a more dramatic shot. 
He's wearing what appears to be like an astronaut suit, even though it's just a flight suit. He jumps and no, no. And Neil deGrasse Tyson says, full, flat, straight up, he says, there is no way you can see the curvature at 120,000 feet, which was interesting. It's like, why would you bring that up on stage? He's, he's no one is saying that. So no. In fact, I've got, I could send you a video in two seconds of a weather balloon at the same altitude, which is absolutely perfectly flat. So who's lying? The weather balloon that we didn't send up, somebody else sent up, or Felix Baumgartner? Look, the Red Bull, it's a brand. But did he did he jump, though? Of course, he was up there, 120,000 feet. It's 20 miles. How hard could that be? <laughs> it's three times higher than the average uh, commercial flights, more or less, yeah. I think, or maybe four times higher. Yeah, it is. But, I mean, it's still i mean yeah i mean it was i'm sure it was super scary to jump up there but he wasn't in okay. space wait he was so in I fact he was suspended airplane. here's the thing he was suspended by a balloon that was the other thing they didn't show it was like it's like people saw this capsule right but they didn't they chopped the shot above it it was a balloon mm -hmm. it wasn't like he was suspended there like up in a, he was, didn't go up by rocket can you explain to me then yes I've seen the flat earth map in actual fact uh, if you go and watch this show this episode later you'll see that my my intro video the very opening shot actually is a flat earth right um, uh, and the the way the continents look is all very it's like almost like the United Nations flag am I it correct? is the United Nations flag okay now I want to ask you something I've I've flown from Johannesburg to Sydney and that flight was about 12 hours yes a flight from Santiago to Sydney is about, I think, 13 or 14 hours. Yep. But the distance is greater, gigantically yeah. different between those two flights. Yep. Explain that to me. Don't know. I really don't know. If there's a super jet stream that we don't know about, uh, if there's something else going on with the flights that we don't know about, are planes traveling faster than we're told? I don't know. Uh, that is, you're absolutely right. It's one of the sticking points we have. We know there's a perspective problem when it comes to the outer rim. Mm. And people will ask that from time to time. But honest answer, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Right, I, well, I, we've got some suspicions, but we can't prove it one way or the other. I thought it was more interesting when I first did the clues of why there were almost no nonstop flights in the Southern Hemisphere. Meaning from between Africa and South, and South America and Australia, 95% of the flights are multiple connections and you're saying well, what does that mean i'm going well because where we are we can get non-stops anywhere it's just a question of money in fact i had a, a travel agent a corporate travel agent down in your neck of the woods mm -hmm. well actually in australia she said she goes you don't know how frustrating it is down here <laughs> our neck of the woods sorry <laughs> where she goes she goes you have no idea how frustrating it is because there are capital cities in the southern hemisphere which it doesn't matter how much money you have you cannot get non-stop flights to and she goes and they should be easy and it doesn't happen and so, yeah, I know. I've heard the Santiago Chile. I've, I've heard it. In fact, I heard that oh, four years ago. Um, no, it's not, it's, it's not a catch question. I've no, literally no, no, flown I've heard from, from here to Sydney, and, so, and, and I know the, the length of the flight. What, what I and... thought was more interesting, here's, here's the, my, my counter, which, again, try, somebody try to counter. I know in chat they're going to have a hard time with it, which is fine. Um, show me the route. Meaning, and it's like, well, no, well, I know. I, went, I, I actually went over the Antarctic, and I've got a photograph. Over the Antarctic. Well, flights don't go over the Antarctic. No, but I, I looked out the window. You, I looked you out the saw, window and I you, saw the ice. You were over the Antarctic. Um, and I've, I actually took flights a photograph. Flights have been banned the from the Antarctic for 30 years. Commercial flights. I don't know where you were, but you weren't over the Antarctic. So let me let me just tell you quickly. So I flew yeah. back from Sydney yeah. to, to Johannesburg, yeah. okay? But the but the flight went, uh, the, the flight path went over a portion of the Antarctic. Yeah. I literally sought out the window because the, the, the pilot told us to look out the window. And for a few hours, it was just white at the bottom. Ice, so, okay, okay so, so you caught the, the fringe of it, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, it was, and it, was, it was a Qantas flight, right. and I had a little TV screen in front of me, and it showed the, the, the flight path, and the plane was flying over over the Antarctic. And I took a photograph of that as well, just because it was so interesting. Got it, got it. Now, are you saying that that, that didn't happen? No, no, no. I'm saying you – no, no. You, you probably caught the fringe of it, sure. Now, you can – can you – cut across it directly no you cannot those have been banned ever since some plane supposedly crashed in the 1970s in a mountain out there it's like what one plane crash and you ban all flights from going over uh, the heart of antarctica for me the mm -hmm. bigger question is why does the gps system not track you meaning when people say okay i've flown from here to here i go which is why i did clue nine everyone gets stuck on clue seven it's like no no i found non-stop flights so it's like great you found non-stop flights that's why i made clue nine which is show me the route meaning when you get over water Remember, it, the GPS system, American military system, mm. 32 supposedly blanket-covered satellites, when you get over water, 
maybe 150 miles offshore where there's no repeating land things to, to go off of, your latitude and longitude go into estimated or approximated mode, meaning you blink off. You're gone. Now, you have sort of a bearing of where you are, but the system is not tracking you exactly where you are because the GPS system doesn't work out there because the GPS system is a land-based system. It is literally a rebranding of the old Loran system, which was land-based radar. They just threw a sticker on it, said they had satellites. Now, are there satellites? Yes, there are. Are they tied to the GPS system? Nah. Nah. As a matter of fact, most of the satellites go up via the high-altitude uh, balloon program from NASA. Most of them don't even go up via rocket, but that's a whole another thing. Um, tell me now about satellites. I mean, how does a cell phone then work? Oh, ground towers and fiber optics. And, and anyone in tech will tell you this. I mean, all, almost all of our data, almost all of the bandwidth is from the old systems which have been upgraded to fiber optics, which is, you know, we under, used underground cables, or I'm sorry, underwater cables for Morse code, were upgraded eventually to better lines, then finally upgraded to fiber optics, used repeaters with cell towers for most of the stuff, that's... So there's no, there are no satellites? Uh, and of course, there's satellites, yes. Yes, yes. I've seen them myself. They're inside. They're inside the dome. Yes, but are yes, but are they transmitting most of the bandwidth? No. Do they transmit a little bandwidth? Sure. Why not? But most of it doesn't. You don't need it. Pennies on the dollar. If you can get a set. In fact, you can look these up. They're wonderful videos on this. Where uh, NASA is proud of it. They. In fact, NASA is the biggest consumer of helium in the world, which most people don't know. And that is, they can take payloads of upwards of. And again, I'm not going to do. I'm going to do pounds for you or tons, I don't know what a ton is for you, but four tons. They can send a four ton payload with a balloon for pennies on the dollar. Ooh. Sorry, Mark, I lost you there for a second, you're back. That's right. Your, oh, I'm sorry, uh, your, so, your, so your NASA- Skype, Your Skype connection. That, that's right, so NASA, are you, am I back now? Yeah, you're okay. back, yeah. So NASA's uh, high altitude weather balloon program uh, can lift payloads of four tons. Why would you use a rocket for any of that? F launching four tons on a rocket is extremely expensive. With that being said, can you tri transmit some bandwidth? Yes, via satellites, yes. Most of it, no, you don't. You go with the land system. That's what we're talking on now. Sure, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, so you're using um, fiber optics uh, right now, I'm guessing. Well, yeah, everybody is. I mean, look at, there's, there yeah, is yeah. a huge amount of fiber optic cables that's being laid between all the continents. Huge amounts, uh, and yeah. it's not a secret. Yeah. We just I just want to ask you something quickly. Yeah. The microphone that you're holding, is it flat? Uh, no, it is a blue... Well, what, wait, what are you talking... Oh, you're talking through your head, your head pieces. No, most no, 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 I'm, I'm using... I'm also using a microphone, yeah. Well, yours isn't exactly flat. It most well, All microphones are shaped like this, with the exception of the wind piece. Yeah, I know. In fact, I used... It's funny you mentioned that, because I used to have a white one, and people just gave me so much hell for it. It's like, you're holding a globe, you're holding a globe. That's how passionate the Flareth community is. It's like, um, no. One of the questions in the comments yeah. was asking about the distance between, I think, Europe and the U.S. Uh, because of the, 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 the map of the flat Earth. Uh, but I guess it's related to the same question I was asking about the, the flight distances. Yeah, don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I can't give you an exact distance between, mm. don't know. You gotta remember, the, the um, GPS in, system also will not only tell you where your, your nearest Starbucks is, but from the military standpoint it's also going to tell you where you can you know it's going to turn you in a certain direction as well mm. so I, sorry it can't be trusted i mean sorry it's it, look the gps system we says oh no it's you know it's completely you know it's legitimate it's like it's military it's the united states mm. military system so well then again not not to be petty but so is the internet i mean technically the internet is also it's created by the u.s government yeah of course it's like it's like oh no they aren't spying on us well you talk about the backbone is the united states military of course they're going to listen to all this stuff including me um are you quite paranoid no 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 because but but i'm different from your your standard conspiracy person do i believe yes i know because in your sorry in your in your film you you you, you showed if there were conspiracy theories as books on a shelf, the one that you would choose is one, the one right at the far end. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, the one I didn't choose. I mean, the one that I, I always ignored. Um, I'm, I'm a little different, though. There's a lot of conspiracy people that are, you know, dark and, you know, they, they like their conspiracies like they like um, Heath Ledger Batman. You know, they're dark and mysterious and like I'm gargling marbles and stuff. But I, I'm a big believer in the greater good. So when I look at a conspiracy, I measure its weight on if I would do it. 
Meaning, if I put myself in their shoes, would I do the same thing? You know, it's like, okay, why? I understand the conspiracy, but why? And if I agree with it, or if I can't come up with a better answer, that's like, oh, okay, mm. I get it, you know, for the greater good. I mean, sacrifices are made. So there, there are two great comments uh, in the, <laughs> the one, the one guy who is a flat earther by his own admission says that you aren't doing the flat earth movement any good. He says that your comments are, are a bit clownish. Cool. Do better. Um, Come do uh, replace not, me. I don't know who he is. No, yeah, no, it's fine. No, and I, and I hear is. that to anyone who ever says that, cause I've done, mm. I, I look at it, Look, I am currently the freshman recruiter. If flat earth was a university, I'm the freshman recruiter, which means mm. I'm, I'm doing most of the interviews to him. I would say, it's like, fine, tell me who you want me to refer. And mm. I will, I will pick that person. And I will absolutely guarantee they get my next five interviews. Tell me who it is. And then the, and then, and then the, but tell them, say it in chat. It's like, pick a, pick a guy, pick a guy who you want on camera right now. And if he says Eric Dubé, <laughs> I'll be like, well, okay, you can't do that. And you know why? So no, I don't care. And then the, and then another comment, which I thought was very funny. He said a shout out to Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Because <laughs> it's uh, the Earth is on top of a, a tortoise, you know. Oh Terry yeah, Pratchett. yeah, 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 yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, we, and I and I've, I've got to clarify because we, if you type in flat Earth into Google and you click on images, almost always you'll get that flying disc in space. Almost With always, the and the media loves using that. And we're the first people to tell you. It's like no. It's like why would there be space? We're talking about a snow globe that could be sitting on the desk of some research lab. It's like, why does there have to be space? The, in fact, the whole point of Flat Earth is that space makes no sense. Space is this, and even Carl Sagan said that. Carl Sagan said, space is just amazingly huge and empty. He goes, it seems like a waste because there's just there's nothing in it. It's 99.99% nothing. So why would you build it like that? And, and, and again, not to go off the biblical side, it's like, well, you're saying mm. that God is lazy. I'm going, no, I'm saying that God is efficient. Whoever built this is extremely efficient. And if most of the people believe the illusion, believe that whatever is up there, remember, there's a great line from uh, the Truman Show, which I love so much, which is, we believe the world that is presented to us. Plain and simple. Uh, everybody, in fact, in, in, in our country, if it's on the news, it's absolutely real and objective. It's like, what? Well, we do know that CNN always tells the truth. Always, always. And Fox News, NBC. Nobody is biased. There is no corporate mm. intervention by anything. It's like, come on, guys. It's like, you know full well. And then that's from going all the way back to what? Citizen Kane. It's like, if you are really rich and you don't like the way a particular news organization is portraying you, what do you do? You buy them. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of the story. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a, science, a science question. I want to go back to some science stuff again. Yeah. Science stuff. I'm not quite sure now. I, I don't even know where I am in, in life at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, when I look at a sunset or a sunrise, right. okay, let me just try and explain my understanding. So in the flat earth model, the sun is above everything at all times. But if I look at a sunset or a sunrise, I see the reflection of the sun right. underneath the clouds. Right. Because I live on the coastline, so I can see that happening. And I can see the sun becoming a half sun and then disappearing ah. behind the horizon. What am I seeing? All right. Um, let me answer the first part, or the second part first, which is the sun going off into the distance. People think they see seen the sun setting, and I absolutely would have been with you, again, up until HD technology. And that is when, in fact, we, there's some wonderful videos. I'll, I'll send it to you when we're done, um, where the sun's going off in the distance. It's just going away. And when it gets off to a certain amount, remember with atmospheric lensing and everything, it's going to, it's going to seem, it's going to start basically blurring out, which means it's going to look like it's setting. But if you zoom in with a camera, as long as you get your filters on, that sun pops back up. That's not possible. Remember, you already saw it. It's so, the sun's already half, it's halfway below the horizon. It's gone. It's like, really? Crank up the zoom. Crank up the zoom. The sun is now popped back up. But when you, and, and when you move your camera down, it's already half the horizon. Camera up, it's popped up again doesn't shouldn't make sense basically what we're saying is the sun just moves away it is only remember it's very 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 small so it can it absolutely can just go away into the distance and it's not above you at all times okay and as, far as, then, as far as the sun going underneath the clouds i don't know i have no idea what the lighting effects are i mean because remember for me for me it's a little different because and not to get into this towards the end but um for me there's a virtual aspect to it which is if it is flat and it's enclosed, it's probably also digital. 
probably also virtual, which blows away the whole concept of the speed of light and everything else that's in it. But I can't talk. I don't usually talk about that because the average person doesn't understand it. Look, the Matrix is now 20 years old. Nobody got it. It's like the Matrix, Matrix, you got it. But a lot of people in the streets like, oh, yeah, the Matrix, in Matrix, out of the Matrix, red pill, blue pill. 20 years. No, it didn't sink in with the, with the public. Uh, but I, so I have to start somewhere, which is, it's flat. Because all simulations, okay, so remember, do you play games, by the way? No, not really. Yeah, well, you've heard of them. I play, like, I, I, I play Call of Duty with my wife. Okay, perfect. Call of Duty, uh, GTA, <laughs> Fortnite, Warcraft, all of them. You know what the, the common thing with all those games are? They're all flat, which is interesting. Interesting. Every simulation we build is perfectly flat. You want to know why? Because it's easy. Nobody likes building curves to everything. Why would you build it? And the reason is, because why would you build a curve if the average person that's in the game doesn't notice it? Why would you build it? It's like, well, because. It's like, no, no, you build it. You basically just a big box, and then you simulate all the curves. Remember, computers can't think in curves. They can only think in squares, which is weird, but it's true. Yeah. Why pixels are pixels. We can draw curves. Human beings are weird that way. We can draw circles. Computers can't. Not really. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm wound up. I haven't been. No, no. Um, <laughs> we we are over time, but I I hope you don't mind still. Well, what around. else you got? Um, what else you got? No, no. It's not what I've got. I've just <laughs> if if the Earth is flat, flat, yeah. and this topic of gravity is controversial. Is Earth is the Earth moving through space? Is it hovering? You, what is it doing? Is you, it come on. We, we just talked about this. Why does there have to be space? Who said there was... Oh, yeah, right. who's, okay, who, so who's, you don't know... No, what, no, it's good, okay. but that's part of the conditioning, which is, you got to remember, the reason why it blows people's minds is because of that thing that's behind your uh, your right shoulder right now, which is, going to remember, in the, the United States... The globe. Yeah, that's very nice that you have a globe back there, very subliminal. The um, Which is, think of, think of it this way. <laughs> the... In the United States, here's a perfect example of conditioning. In the United States, we have our flag sitting in the corner of every classroom, right? And it's there literally from the time you're in first grade all the way through 12th grade. By the time you're done with 12th grade, there's a lot of people that, you know, it's like, wow, you know, that flag, I'm willing to fight for it. They'll join the military, just some of them based on the freaking flag. What's usually below that flag? That stupid globe. You know, what's the difference between the flag and the globe? Almost nothing. Only that it, they're just two images that have been sitting there. It's a powerful thing. You have that thing sitting in the corner of your classroom for 12 years. What do you think people are going to do? It's like, oh, yeah, that's where we live. That's it. What, you don't believe in that? You're stupid. <laughs> it's amazing, so, the conditioning. But I'm sorry, gra so I'm I'm sorry just... gravity. So, no, the, the, the Earth isn't... That, by the way, it's an old, old argument, which is, you know, um, is the Earth flying through space sideways? No, 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 no. I mean, is the, the flat out... No, no. There doesn't have to be space. Who told you there, there was space in the first place? The American military, those guys, they told you there was space. So on this model of the flat Earth, the sun is going around like that, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, circling around the center. Right. Okay, so if I'm on the one side right. and the sun is moving away, I'm guessing towards nighttime. Right. Why doesn't, why doesn't the sun get smaller as it goes further away from me and gets bigger and ah. over noon lunchtime it would be at its biggest size i'm guessing and in some cases again i the jury's still out on this one but in some videos that we have watched the sun actually does get smaller when it goes off in the distance but it's so bright you don't notice it it's so weird um i, I could again i could show you some wonderful videos on it where but yeah i've seen conflicting videos which is kind of like um uh the, again the sun i like i didn't realize the the aspects of the sun until i watched the eclipse which was the sun is so bright that nobody looks at it as an object like a circle. It's just so bright you can't even fathom it. But you throw filters mm. on it and you send it off into the distance, it does seem to get smaller. At least in some of the stuff I've watched. And explain this to yeah. me, Mark. Yes. I live in the southern hemisphere, you live in the northern hemisphere. Right. When, I, when I, If I go outside right now, it's nighttime for me, it's daytime for you. If I go outside now and I look up at the, the sky, it's not the same sky as what you look You're at. You're absolutely right. Why is that? Why does it happen? Um, short answer: multiple projection systems. How's that? Um, so okay. if you're in a planetarium, uh, and again, I don't know if they have planetariums down in in Joburg. Wait, are you? You're not in Joburg, though. You're outside of Joburg. I'm in Cape Town. Cape Town. And yes, we do have planetariums. Okay, perfect. Well, I don't know. I mean, no, we don't go to. We've got lots of them. Nobody goes to them. You have to be like. Oh. Do you think? Do you think I ride a, a tiger in in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> or a lion? And, and, <laughs> no, I think you hang out with uh, uh, D Antwerp. How's that? Uh, no. I like the way you said it. What, the Edward? <laughs> yeah, it's not pronounced like that, but it's Wait, fine. how is it pronounced? 
It's actually an Afrikaans uh, word, so it's actually die antwoord. So it's more, you must try and say it oh, with, with a German... an accent. Nah. Mm. <laughs> now I'm an American. Um, sorry. So what was the what was the question again? Um, oh, okay. So wait, it was wait it was okay. So the, the I was star, oh no no it's good about... no it's good okay. So imagine this. So you're in a planetarium. There's only one projection system because it's not very big. It's not even a couple hundred yards wide, right? But let's say you're in a planetarium that's only say a hundred miles wide, right? You are on one side, your friends on the other side, and you're both having cell phones. You're talking to each other, and you say, mm. "Hey, I see the belt of Orion," and you say, "Oh, I see the belt of Orion too, but it's upside down, and the star in the middle is blue." And he says, "No, it's red." Who's right? Well, the, or or you've seen completely different star systems. It doesn't really matter because you can only in something this big, you can't be in two places at the same time. So you just do multiple projection systems. That's the way I would do it. I mean, we've been doing this literally in virtual aspects for twenty years. Easy, and easy to do. And then based on that, yeah. uh, seasons. How how do you have inverted seasons? If I, I'm I'm now going into summer and I think you're going gotcha into... gotcha gotcha. Um, the sun. It's a combination of several things, but the the easiest one for people to understand would be again you're not that old because you look like you're 28. The um, which, thank you. Which is the sun going around like a needle on a record player. So on a record player, the remember it doesn't take the same track every time, and as the song plays, it goes closer yes. and closer in. And if you reverse it, it would go further and further out. Uh, that's how you do the seasons. That in combination with a few other things. To, to, remember, because the sun wouldn't be totally responsible for all, for all the uh, heating and cooling aspects of this. You've got the um, the jet stream up above. You've got the underwater conveyor system. People take that for granted. That transfers huge amounts of energy in the oceans. The magma system and anything else you can you can think of. Uh, I've got one more question, and then I think we'll probably start wrapping up, and I'll I'll go to the comments. Uh, but okay. Um, actually, I've actually now forgotten what I was <laughs> asking. I, I, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Just give me a second. Right. <laughs> um, cool. Oh right. Why? Why does the moon have craters if it's just a prop? Is it just part of the prop? Yeah, I was about to say, why decorate any prop ever? I, in and fact, then for in that fact, matter... In fact, no, no, I'll, 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 let me run with this one for a second, which is, why are all the craters so perfect? Meaning, most people, again, completely miss it. It's like, okay, the moon is full of craters. We all know that. You know, the moon is made of cheese. It's good. Why are all the craters 90-degree impact craters? Statistically, that's impossible. Meaning, all the craters are like the asteroids came in at a perfect 90 degree angle came in straight into the ground didn't skiff off of anything there's no skid marks it's all perfect craters all the way around this thing it's like that doesn't happen the moon has a weak if you even believe you know that the moon is real that would imply that the weak form of gravity wouldn't you know and the moon's gravity is not going to divert anything there's no elongated skid so then, marks they're all 90 degree craters how so then what causes the tides Oh, it's under it's underground. It's, uh, all the the same thing that causes the tides would is no different than gravity. It's just a modification of gravity, because remember, it, I'm saying this from a design standpoint. Remember, I, I came from game design, so the, I have to look at it. It's like, okay, why would you do these things? The last thing you would do, if you wanted to control the tides, is hook up a, a directional gravitational force to the moon. It's too small, and it's it's just problematic. So you can just you just manipulate it from down below. <laughs> what are they just torching me in chat it's just no 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 <laughs> it's just the this conversation is nuts <laughs> all right let me quickly let me quickly look at a few comments um you've you've been very gracious oh, by no. hanging around after time let me <laughs> I, I honestly have enjoyed this conversation I, I think i'd love to get you back on i think this this is going to be a very popular video um, and podcast and i think people are going to want you back on there's so much more to ask but let me just quickly ask you a few comments yeah from the, yeah yeah from the, from the comments okay um uh all right the flat earther in the comments is saying that you're just not getting it so he doesn't like you uh, he, he's, he's <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. he's a flat earther he, he just doesn't like yes me? fine fine whoever it is tra track this and you you can tell me later fine who do you want who do you want to be interviewed what flat earther do you want to be interviewed name him Give it to okay. Jaron, Bob, to David Weiss, Patricia, Anthony, Roxanne. There's, I, I could go on and on and on. There's so many high profile people in Flat Earth. Tell me who you want. So uh, there's, a, there's a guy saying, uh, where the F did you, do you get all this information? I guess that's a one you get asked often. 
Uh, you just do your own. Oh, that no, it's a great question, by the way, and I don't mind that he swore about it because it's a, it's a good question, which is, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not even here to persuade you. I'm just trying to give you something to think about. Don't take what my word for it. Do your own research and ask questions. Then do it. I mean, everyone does the same thing. It's like, wow, this is the stupidest idea ever. Sky, go find, mm. research it. Figure out, figure out where I went wrong and then tell me. Send me an email that convinces me and I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. Every day I try to, seriously, every morning I try to destroy Flat Earth and every day I fail. I don't want to do this. Okay. Uh, he's answered your question. He said, yeah, excuse me if I get this name wrong. He says, Antonio Sub Subarets? Uh, Sub <laughs> yeah. Antonio Subarets. Oh my God. Antonio is a pariah in the UK. Really? After the whole Patricia thing? Yeah. Antonio won't get to do anything ever, 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 uh, ever. Who, who is this Antonio oh, person? Antonio Subarets is a... Um, uh, he's one of the Flat Earth members out in the UK, and he has burned so many bridges, including um, he was he was the ex-boyfriend of the woman in the documentary, Patricia Steer. Remember, well, in fact, in the documentary, remember when the thing where she moved to London, that, that brief thing where she moved to London and we were apart for a while? Yeah, that's why she moved to London, yeah. just to be with Antonio Subarets, and it ended horribly. So yeah, great choice out of all, as the so, first time I've ever heard anyone say, yeah, Antonio Oh my God! You would have better off with Jaron or Bob or somebody, Antonio. So are you not? Are you not friendly with Antonio? God, no! I can't be. No, I can't be. Not after not after the whole Patricia thing. No, 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 no. I I won't. Well, I won't talk about this on air. Ish, no, he's okay, a, he's okay, a, no problem. No, he's a, he's um, a free, he's an instigator. Has he helped us in the past with some things? Sure, but he has burned bridges. He has pissed a lot of people off. Mm. Sorry, I'm gonna and I'm gonna give you one more comment because yeah. I think you you have to probably duck. Um, <laughs> It's a, it's a great comment. It's not even a question. He just says, yeah, he thinks that you sound like a Bill Murray from Ghostbusters. <laughs> you know, I get that a lot. And I'm going to take that as a compliment because I used to be a lot cuter when I was 20. Uh, but yeah, people have said many times like, oh, wow, you remind me of Bill Murray when he was, you know, a certain age. And it's like, wow, that's, that's awesome. I mean, look, Bill Murray is a, is a fantastic actor and a wonderful comedian. And I have loved his work. And I grew up with Bill Murray. So, you know what? Thank you for that. I just want to say quickly, you were talking about the U.S. military and how they are so powerful. It must be fantastic having a military that actually can do something. Wait until you come to our country. We have a military that is unbelievably useless well so, uh, <laughs> look uh, <laughs> do you know that there was a story i think of uh, about three years ago where uh, one of the submarines out here in cape town uh, they uh, were doing a test a test i don't know if you call it a drive pilot and they they rammed it into the ground under the on the onto the seabed oh, no. <laughs> and it got damaged look, uh, it, it, and you know the grass is always greener i know that some people say oh you're the american military so but come on there's a lot of people that hate the American military. I mean, there's, we, we try to be, let me, let me sum it up with this. We try to be the good guys. We try to be the white hats and it's kind of tough to do when you're into colonialization and, you know, taking things. It's like, it's like, come on, if you come on, let, let's face it, guys, it, it's nice. To, if, if you have resources, like if you have oil on the ground, under the ground right now, it's only a matter of time before someone... We have lots of gas. Yes. We have lots of gas under the ground. Yeah, it's only a matter of time before someone comes knocking on your door. And the first choice is probably going to be us. So... Mark, yeah. I want to I wanna kill the stream now because you've, you've, you've been very gracious by being over time. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play my, my outro video. Don't go anywhere. I, don't go anywhere. Um, I just want to get your details. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. But I just want to say thank you to everybody for watching. This has been quite possibly the weirdest conversation I think I've had in years, <laughs> but it's been wonderfully entertaining. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, please uh, catch germ warfare next week. Mark, thank you so thank much for, for joining me. All right. Ciao.